This is Sunday, fun day at TIFF. And we're here. We are here. The Toronto International Film Festival. I hit my head in the bathtub today, like an idiot. And I was thinking about like how we should probably like show people what this all looks like behind the scenes because it's not as pretty as it looks like when everyone's dressed up and interviewing and talking about their projects. There's actually like a lot of stress that goes into it. It's hard to get invitations to events and things when you're at a festival. Everybody's going after the same sort of prize, so and a lot of people that I want to interview are not getting back to me. Because I'm not famous enough yet. I can't believe that I forgot like long socks, like long thin socks, and I didn't bring my other pair of black shoes. Ah oh, well. Make do with what you've got. Just waiting for the Uber. I don't know why I'm nervous. I guess this is like my first official press screening. And so today is the day. It's Sunday fun day at the Toronto International Film Festival. And I only got two days for all access, the 9th and the 11th. So today, uh, a few amazing things happened. I had access to the Deadline Hollywood New Hollywood Podcast, which was an amazing brunch. And now I'm getting ready to go to the red carpet premieres, A Star is Born, with Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. I, I can't be more excited, but I'm so humbled that I get to be here. And to be a member of the press, at one of the world's largest independent film festivals is, is pretty much that dream starting to come true. So, I'm really excited. This is the Toronto International Film Festival. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm going to be on the red carpet or near it. And then after that, it's going to be A Star is Born. So let's get our Gaga on. So let's... It's a ring that Lady Gaga gave out. I think it's... Nice. And she's going to know when I shoot this into the air. Is she going to remember I it? I hope she does, because she only did this once. Or one tour, so... Yeah. We'll see what happens. Okay, well you got... I'm not gonna wear it because it's kind of stingy. Because <laughs> I've been holding on to it for so yeah. long. What's the vibe here? Is the vibe good here? It's good. Yeah? Good time. Are you guys enjoying it? Yeah. Where are you guys from? We, are, we, we live in Toronto. I'm Jared Drew. What? Godfrey, nice to meet you. Godfrey, what a beautiful name. Carly. Thank you. Carly. Are you guys excited about TIFF? We are. Yeah, for sure. yeah. Are you here for one of the films? or? Yeah, you? I'm about to go on the red carpet. Awesome, very exciting. Congratulations. Yeah, Lady Gaga can smoke in her documentary, so <laughs> I'm just gonna gaga it. <laughs> gaga. I'm security guard. Is Stephanie here? Gaga? Uh, um, no, I don't. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. All right. So that way. Yes. All right. Keep heading straight, you're gonna see them on the right. the check-in. Um. Hey everybody, it's Jared Drew from GazeAroundTheWorld.com and we are here at the Toronto International Film Festival. Right now is the premiere, the North American premiere of A Star is Born, starring Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. And it's also Bradley Cooper's directorial debut. It's all going on behind us. And uh, right now, um, I went, I met her like computer, Jeanette. And uh, you and I were trying to get into the press area, and uh, apparently our call time was wrong. That's correct. I had a 4.45 call time, and I needed to be at the 4.30, and I should be on that right now. Right. So I was there uh, and 
my colleague is inside, so if you see anything from gazearoundtheworld.com, it's probably going to be him pretty much talking behind his camera, talking about, you know, not just Lady Gaga, but the entire cast, right? Uh, welcome to the assembled members of the press and to the uh, cast and director of A Star Is Born. Uh, thank you so much uh, for this film. I was telling you backstage uh, how much I enjoyed it. And there's a, a, a couple of reasons uh, for that. Not only is it a terrific film, but there's a couple of things that I wanted to, to ask about just off the top. And one of them was that one of the, the overarching themes in this movie is about being true to yourself, uh, creating art that, that speaks to you specifically, and then hopefully that will find an audience. If it's authentic, it will. And I, I can't help but wonder that in a time when uh, the arts are kind of under siege in a lot of ways. Government funding is being cut, and that's what they, if there's a message in this film regarding that. Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having us. Uh, and it's great to have all the whole cast. It's the first time we've all been together since we shot the movie. So it's pretty cool just for me to see all these incredible artists here. I'm such a lucky person to have worked with them. Um, that was never anything conscious. I mean, Funding for the arts and a plea for it to grow is something that's kind of an age-old tradition at this point, right? I mean, dating back to the 40s, 50s, and 60s. So, so I mean, that's that's as long as you one can create content that's that's compelling. I mean, I think that's the biggest motivator to help fund it, isn't it? I, listen, that that's that that to me was one of the messages of the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it then about this story? It's been three years at least of, of this journey to get here. What was it about this story that that drew you most? You know, the the truth is, it's it's not one thing. It, it, it was it's been just a sequence of uh, sonic ideas and compositions and meeting people and saying, uh, you know, and I love faces and eyes and voices and, and all of these people uh, have incredible. Uh, character that I just was obsessed with putting on film and then I have such a unique dy dynamic with each one and they have with each other. So in terms of the human element, that was all inspirational and it kept evolving depending on who was going to be in the movie, uh, which as you can tell, you know, it's very specific to who they are. Um, but it really was, you know, probably started about six years ago when I was at a Metallica concert and I was, and I, and I, and I was behind Lars Ulrich's drum kit and I saw the scope, the proscenium of that, and I thought, oh, just to be on the stage the whole time, that's how I want to see a movie. I've never seen a movie where the, all the concert footage, you're always on the stage. So really, and I, I wanted to tell a love story, um, and it was also, you know, just not to get too specific, but it was Annie Lennox singing uh, the cover of I Put a Spell on You, and I was looking at the veins in her neck and how pure it was, and I thought, well, that's the best way. If I could have that in the movie, because the, you can't hide when you're singing. So it was just a bunch of elements, but all of the epicenter is Lady Gaga. I mean, she was the one that propelled the whole thing. Let's talk about working on this film, creating the character of Ali. Uh, it's tremendous work. The reviews, I don't know if you read reviews, but the reviews are she's not really believable. Not really. You know what? <laughs> in, in this case, you should. Advice. <laughs> uh, but it's fantastic, and I love the stories that I've heard about uh, working with Bradley on this. And there were a couple of, of key words that, that you would use uh, when he was directing you. So if you wanted a feeling of warp, warmth, he would whisper the word Tony to you to make you think of Tony Bennett. And there were a number of others. Can you just tell me about that process and, and how it made you feel and drew the performance out of you? Well, uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me here today, Richard, and thank you all for being here. I feel very, very honored to be sitting on this stage with these tremendously talented human beings and kind and loving human beings who are, I'm happy to call my friends now. Um, you know, I think Bradley is an incredible filmmaker and I have acted before but I've never been a lead actress in a feature film and every day on set was such a thrill to watch him work. Uh, it was such a thrill to act in the environment that he created. He operates with such precision, and he has such a vision, and you can see the gears turning while he's working, even while he's in character at the same time. And, you know, yes, he would whisper things to me like Tony, or come, come on, assassin, or ninja, and we would, and we would, and we would pound each other, you know. And, and what it helped me do was to, you know, I had the lines memorized, uh, he told me the most important thing was to know 
what I was trying to say, to tell the story that I was meant to tell in that scene. And then when we got on set, I, I could just throw it all away and exist in this precise but completely liberating environment. It was not rigid. It was a very artistically free experience, and I'm a very, very grateful to him for believing in me. So thank you, thank you, Bradley. I think it just starts with what's on the page, and it was clearly there from the get-go. You know, and then it was beyond that. It was in Bradley's head, in space, as you know, Stephanie just said. That, uh, I think when you start out and you have, you know, there's that old adage, if it ain't on the stage, it ain't on the page, you know, or vice versa, you know. And, I, and I've always been a believer in that, but in terms of how I got there, I just, you know, I, I'd never crossed paths with Bradley before I started on this film. But, uh, I'd always been a fan and do his work, obviously, but was kind of intrigued that this young man was going to be a first-time director on this particular vehicle. And, uh, he convinced me very early on, like five minutes into the uh, first encounter, that that he could be trusted. You know, and I, I think you know, it's as Stephanie said. I mean, trust is a huge part of this game. And when you're trying to get at the truth, you've got to be able to trust someone. You know, and, and Bradley just. He, he, he set, set such a tone. Was, you know, I've, I've been at this a long time, and if I haven't figured out something by now, then odds are I never will. You know? <laughs> and, uh, I would, uh, you know, again, you know, I mean, Stephanie's so eloquently laid it out. I think for all of us, it's just, you know, Bradley had this vision of telling this incredible tale, this very human tale set it against this incredible backdrop, this music backdrop. And I'm just honored to be part of it. I'm happy to be part of it and do my bit. I've always thought that actors were just part of the crew, you know, on a, on a voyage, on a long voyage. And you, you hope the guy that's standing the helm has a vision and knows where he's going. <laughs> you know, and this man sure did. No, this wasn't shot in any kind of sequence, was it? Or I mean, we tried to. We, we had to adhere to some certain uh, dates that we wanted to get to things that were open. But no, we tried to do it as, as sequentially as possible. I always think that's a key thing to do. So tell me a little bit about uh, your experience of shooting and, and working with Jack and or Bradley as a director as well as for sure. uh, character. It was both. Uh, nah, yeah, it was great, man. I mean, uh, <coughs> Stephanie's a beast. Oh my gosh, like. My man. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it was a blessing learning um, from her every day. It was constant, like, when somebody's so available, you, you can't help but to open up. It's like, and if you don't, you're like a liar. I was like, I'm not trying to lie. I was just, and, um, and it was just amazing, you know, we, Bradley, it, I talk to people all the time, like, I was hanging out with Spike on set, um, the other Lee. day. Spike Lee, Spike Lee, sorry, 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 my bad. Name drop. <laughs> With my good friend uh, Spike. That's, yeah. Yo, but really, I was I was about to you know I was about to land on the I was about to land on the dot on the point. You feel me? Like I was chilling with Spike, and I'm like, Yo, Bradley's gonna go down as one of the greatest directors of all time. Like the level of focus on set. I'm talking. I would stay on set and watch Bradley work in between takes, only because I was like, Yo, he's like he's gonna be one of the greats, and I got. If, if I'm trying to be where he's at, I'm, I'm gonna stay right here in the cut, and I'm gonna watch my man work. I'm gonna watch him set up this next shot, you know. And um, and this, you know, it's it's dope playing this role because he's, you know, Ramon is he's he's a real one. He's you know I think anybody who's on on the rise or you know you're doing anything, you become successful or whatever in whatever you do. I think it's important to keep real people in your life, you know. And, I think when we lose those people, we take, we start to lose ourselves. I think those people help us remind us who we are, you know, who we were and who we are. And uh, and I love being able to be that guy for her uh, in the movie. Um, so yeah, it was it was awesome. It was a great experience. Not uh, at a Sean Parker event performing as myself, but I was Ali singing La Vie en Rose, so I sing it a little bit differently. And. Um, 
you know, I think one of the most beautiful moments of this film is when she walks through the tinsel and she hears him playing a song where he says the lyrics, maybe it's time to let the old ways die to the drag queens as they're sitting there. And um, I think to myself, she's falling in love with this man because she sees he has empathy, he has compassion, he has love, he's a kind person. Uh, it's, it's such a special moment in the film. And I also thought that he, as a filmmaker, executed it with perfect authenticity. Uh, I don't feel for a second when I'm watching those scenes that I'm not in a real drag bar. Have your case. <laughs> Hello everyone, Andrea K, CTV News, Toronto. Okay, all of you broke my heart in this film, first of all, and that is a good thing. Bradley, can you talk a little bit about uh, becoming a musician, playing the guitar? As you just said, you shot it in eight minutes. Uh, we would have all obviously thought that it was take after take after take, but it was brilliant. And uh, Lady Gaga, can you talk about songwriting? Can you both talk about songwriting? Because we can hear these songs in our minds on the radio. They are real songs. They're not just something you drop in a film to bridge something. The songs are almost like a character in the film for, for both of them. Absolutely. All, well, all the lyrics forward the story. Yeah, there's not that's one the crazy thing about yeah, No, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the music, the songs are a complete character in the movie, and there's not one lyric that's not purposefully put that's either reflecting where a character's at, what the relationship is, or what they're yearning for. Um, so it's constantly propelling or reflecting on what you're seeing while it's happening. Um, it was a very amorphous thing that was cultivated along with the script. I mean, we were changing and implementing songs depending on, you know, weeks before we were, or days before, or on the or day. On the day. Um, we had this sort of arsenal of music that was being cultivated. We, we would sort of leave the set and then go to the studio and work. Um, but in terms of my own uh, uh, evolution as a musician, it's 100% due to this person right here. She, and it's, it's odd because so much of our relationship is reflected or reflects from what the relationship of Allie and Jackson. I mean, she really gave me the confidence from the very first time I met her. We were singing together 10 minutes into <coughs> meeting, which I don't know how that happened. And I was freaking out over his voice. <laughs> I can't believe how incredible your voice is. But it really gave me the confidence to then really work on it. And then we started writing songs. I started writing songs and, 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 and uh, arranging songs. And, and, and her masterful ability to cultivate talent. That's the thing that, I mean, we all know that she's so talented, but she's such a cultivator of talent and so selfless with her not giving her knowledge and enthusiasm to other people, which was really wonderful. And that created a harmony of all the writers. With Jason Isbell wrote an amazing song, Mark Ronson, Hillary Lindsay, Lucas Nelson I cannot say enough about. Yes. Lucas Nelson, who I saw at Desert Trip, and I was on the, ju was on the Jumbotron, I love the way Neil Young plays guitar, and a lot of Jackson, I like that muscular way that he plays, I didn't want it to be sort of lyrical. But I found myself looking at Lucas Nelson on the Jumbotron, who was playing right next to him, and I met him the next day, and his band winds up being Jackson's band, and he was integral to the creation of the sound of the music. Yes a lot to me and I think to both of us that at the beginning of making this film we sort of shook hands literally and said you know he said to me you are an actress I said to him you are a musician and uh, and we made that exchange and yes I'm, I'm very excited to, to act more but I'm not excited to act more because I'm interested in looking for career moves you know or what's going to you know uh, blast me off to outer space or however people think about it. For me, it is all about the project. It is all about the process. It is all about the work. And that is what he is all about. I mean, the preparation that he put into ma making this film was undeniably spectacular. He was not just writing the film, acting in the film, directing the film. He was also writing music for the film, working in the studio. And you know, I remember at a time when we were in there working on a song for him, and I tell this story, I don't know if you like it when I tell this story, but I think it's a great story. Um, and I was sitting at the console, we were listening back, and Lucas Nelson was there, and his Jack's whole band. And Bradley came in, and he was like, this isn't Jackson's sound. This is, what is this? This isn't what he sounds like, this isn't it. And I, and I was like, oh, okay. I got a musician on my hand. <laughs>